I'm Tina Beth Pena. Life in our multicultural world constantly highlights the contrast between us. We're white, we're black, we're Hispanic, we're Asian, we're rich, we're poor. The story I'm about to tell you is fraught with contrast and controversy. It brings together different cultures and different economic realities in the most basic of ways and around the most important issue there is, the gift of life. બાળક મારા પેટમાં રહ્યું છતાંય મારા જેવું નથી કે નથી અમારા કોઈ જેવું હોય ને ઇન્ડિયા જેવું એ બાળક એમના જેવું છે મારી જે બેબી છે એ સેમ એના પપ્પા જેવી છે અને છોકરો છે એની મમ્મી પર પડે છે These women are paid surrogates for infertile couples who travel to India from all over the world to have a baby Since 2002 commercial surrogacy has been legal in India and is one of only a handful of countries including Russia Thailand and the Ukraine where women can be paid to carry someone else's genetic child. India is really ahead of the United States in terms of making surrogacy legal and well regulated and affordable for the vast majority of people who want to have a baby. Hiring a surrogate is such a strange idea for most people anyway, and then traveling all the way to India to have a baby is even stranger. So if you have a healthcare system that you're comfortable with and people who speak English it makes it everything much much easier and it makes you feel safer and more comfortable about having a baby there Leslie documented Arizona couple Rhonda and Jerry Weil in her book The Baby Chase the pair had their first child in 2009 via an Indian surrogate and Indian egg donor and a set of twins in 2011 through an other Indian surrogate and egg donor Rhonda and Jerry have had a wonderful experience with surrogacy they have had three children born via two surrogates in India. There is no way that they could have afforded having surrogate babies in the United States. They couldn't have come up with $100,000 for one baby, much less $300,000 for three. It really was the difference between having zero babies and being able to have the family they always dreamed of. Typically speaking, if you wanted to get a surrogate in the U.S., it costs about $100,000 plus the IVF costs and all that. So you're looking at about a hundred and fifty thousand dollar budget. We provide the same surrogates in India for about thirty five thousand dollars. So suddenly, an overseas surrogate is a great low cost option. That affordability also attracted Lisa and Brian Switzer, who are featured in the documentary Made in India. The surrogacy route was a perfect option for them, since Lisa isn't medically able to have children. We don't really have the luxury of waiting or the luxury of, of seeing if there's other alternatives. This is something that's, this is our one and final shot. The Switzers traveled to India, underwent in vitro fertilization, and had their embryo transferred into a surrogate at the Rotunda Clinic, one of more than 3,000 clinics in India that employ surrogates to carry babies to term. Most people can find these clinics by just Googling Indian surrogates online. But there are providers in the U.S., like Indian Egg Donors, Inc., which match couples with surrogacy clinics in India. How are the surrogates chosen? They're usually uh, hefty village women who are very, with great physiques who have had at least one child and are in their 20s. Now, what we do with them is we screen them, make sure they're okay. And if they check out fine, uh, they carry the embryos. After they're implanted and they get pregnant and we say, hurrah, we are so happy, uh, they then go and live in a, college, in a home which is almost like a college dormitory with about 20 or 30 other surrogates in different stages and they get paid their meals and they have a nurse and a manager watching over them. We were able to look after them better than you would hear. Here, there's no control over them if they become pregnant. Um, you know, you have no control over what they are eating or if they are smoking. We have caretakers uh, for their children because they are of a certain age group, so they have children. We have a nutritionist looking after their diet. We have an ambulance standby to take them for their checkups. What makes an Indian woman want to become a surrogate? Uh, usually it is uh, economic uh, need. Um, uh, you know, they may want to have a house of their own or they may want to invest in the education of their children. They get paid a lot of money for doing it, which by Indian standards, maybe two year salary. 
and then they used that money. Um, and many of them put up new homes for themselves, or they put a new roof, they feed their families. And many of them become serial surrogates. I mean, India is a very paternalistic country where women are fed, educated, and cared for last, always behind the boys in their family, in their community. So Indian women have very limited opportunities to make money, to make any kind of living. And surrogacy is one of the few things that men cannot do. And so it's a unique um, and in many, under the ideal circumstances, a wonderful transformational opportunity for Indian women. Do you think being a surrogate is empowering for these women in India? I do. There's no doubt that being a surrogate is empowering, at least for the women who I talk to who are not coerced into doing it. They go from being just kind of a servant in their families to being the hero of their family and often their entire community. Surrogates can earn anywhere from two to $9,000 and are paid extra for cesarean and multiple births. They are put through a thorough screening process for physical and psychological health. The surrogate knows that she has to give the baby away. And plus they have psychological um, evaluation being done of the surrogate there. They have counseling through the pregnancy so that she's ready to give the baby away. And you know, unlike during delivery and there is no danger of her not wanting to give it away. Also the government, because the contract she signs, she, the, one of the things, is, the stipulations is that she has no right over the baby. From the time she conceives the baby, it belongs to the intended parent. It doesn't belong to the woman carrying the baby. According to a World Bank report, the commercial surrogacy industry in India will reach $2.5 billion by the year 2020, and laws have been passed to regulate the industry. They also require that surrogates be between 21 and 35 years old. Nevertheless, critics point out that not enough has been done for the surrogates themselves. They are the ones who are maximum exploited in this whole process of uh, offering themselves to, uh, to produce a child for someone who's childless and supposed to be a very noble idea and noble cause. But they are not uh, being, uh, you know, in many, many cases, they do not know what kind of a contract gets signed, how much money is promised, and how much money actually gets delivered. The contract that we signed with Planet Hospital was broken down into how much everybody would be paid. Is that what got done? I don't know. There is a legislation, it should talk about respecting surrogates' rights, which is very shallow in the present form. What happens to the surrogates after they've given birth? And in the United States, where we have a very good health care system, it's not such a big issue. But in India, it's a very big issue. The surrogates get outstanding medical care when a wealthy intended parent is paying the bill. But what if she has complications four or six months later? The surrogate is really on her own after that. Long-term care for the sh surrogates needs to be part of the regulation, but at this stage it is not. To further regulate the industry, India has drafted the Assisted Reproductive Technologies Bill to ensure the protection of the surrogate, the children, as well as the commissioning parents. Although the bill has yet to pass through India's parliament, it would at least put in place proper laws to give clarity and transparency to all the people involved. Nevertheless, despite the delay, surrogates have not stopped outsourcing their wombs. You do hear stories about some people complaining that the surrogates have been exploited. We have a hundred surrogates waiting in line for every surrogate who is selected. It's a freedom of, of, of choice issue. And in the United States and in India, I talked to many, many surrogates who insisted that they love doing it. So there, it may be that there are women who have mixed feelings. Also, the, the surrogate who is carrying the babies for the couple I profiled, Rhonda and Jerry Weil, she was carrying twins. And she was pretty candid about the fact that she did have mixed feelings about it. She wanted to do it, but she, such as when she went in for the ultrasounds, she asked the doctor, 
to turn the volume down on the machine because she didn't want to hear the heartbeats. She also, she ended up having the babies naturally, but she really wanted to have a cesarean. Um, it wasn't her choice. The doctors in charge make the choices. Um, but she wanted a cesarean because she wanted it to feel like an operation, not like giving birth the way she had given birth to her two, the children that were hers. In 2014, India allowed the import of frozen embryos into the country after having banned them in 2011. This decision can be appealing to some prospective parents because a fertility doctor in their native country can perform the entire medical procedure. India only has to supply the surrogate. For Asian American Life, I'm Tina Beth Pina.